So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's take a second look at the latest in Samsung's line of epic smartphone tablet hybrids. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. This is the Galaxy Note 3, and this is episode 28 of After the Buzz. We've come a long way from the first Galaxy Note. No longer just a surprisingly successful side project, the Note family now represents the very best that Samsung's Android lineup has to offer. In our full review back in October, we called the device the most capable, most powerful phablet on the market. And the Note 3 went on to sell over 10 million units in only two months. Whether that winning streak will continue as the device ages in 2014 depends on a variety of factors, beginning with hardware. As you can see, our AT&T-provided Note 3 hasn't exactly led a coddled life, and it bears the scars to prove it. While the look of the revised styling and materials holds up nicely, this fake metal is just that, fake. And it shows, even after a single drop on the sidewalk. As Jaime Rivera noted in his durability report, this is really soft plastic, and it dings quite easily. On the flip side, though, the faux leather back cover has held up beautifully over time, at least on our black unit here. A quick Twitter survey showed mixed results with the white cover, with some folks reporting some discoloration, but others saying no such thing. And while it is possible to scratch the Gorilla Glass 3 up front, it's not particularly easy to do so. So overall, we're looking at a fairly typical story on the outside. While putting a case on such a mammoth phone seems almost ludicrous, you might want to consider it, because it's just as fragile as most modern smartphones. Thankfully, the Note 3's guts were built to last in each of its incarnations. Your region and personal preference govern which processor hums along under the hood, but in either case, you've got a lot of power there. Power which should have no trouble seeing you through a two-year contract, even if you waited till recently to buy one. That said, you might want to think about investing in a spare battery. The included power pack is big, and it impressed us in the initial review period. But over time, the Note 3's endurance hasn't exactly measured up to the legacy of its forebears. With beasts like the G Flex out there, three hours of screen on time per charge is no longer a class leading metric. Now, just to be fair, we have been using almost every feature of the Note 3 during our re review period, which included CES 2014, where the ability to swap power packs saved our butts more than once. So, if you're a real road warrior like us, pick up a spare battery or two so you can stay juiced up even when using the Note 3 to its utmost. Speaking of power users, it's you folks, in part, that Samsung is targeting with the Note 3's companion smartwatch, the polarizing Galaxy Gear, and we've been using it almost non-stop since AT&T sent us one shortly after its release. While the Gear has since been updated to work with other Samsung smartphones, it's particularly well-suited to the Note 3. That's because this is a phone big enough that you don't always want to be wrestling it from your pocket. And with its latest software update, the Gear makes that less necessary. Being able to read notification snippets on the watch is quite handy, and battery life improvements mean you're not charging it quite as often as you once had to. Is the gear still overpriced? Most people would say so, yes. Should you wait for the second iteration if you want a more polished product? Sure. But even in its current form, it's a truly useful and capable companion that adds more utility to the Note 3 experience than most people give it credit for. We saw some really awesome new software come out of Samsung at CES, but for now, that new tile-like interface is confined to its tablet line. Our Review Note 3 still runs Samsung's older UI atop Android 4.3, and, well, unlike a fine wine, it doesn't get better with age. Since the Note 3 launched, we've seen some really lightweight, really elegant enhancements elsewhere in the Android world some of it running beautifully on hardware literally hundreds of dollars cheaper than the Note 3s. Now, lightweight, elegant, and beautiful are not words we'd assign to the Note 3's software, 
and compared to the modern stuff, it's starting to feel even more clunky than before. Really, an update can't come soon enough. Fortunately, those negatives are counterbalanced by the excellent S Pen. No matter how often you use it or don't, it's the best stylus in the business. And the industry-leading multitasking ability, which many manufacturers are now aping on their own devices, but Samsung's approach is still far superior. So on balance, the day-to-day -day experience is probably best encapsulated by this qualifier. No, but. Is it comfortable to talk on the Note 3 for extended periods? No, but the phone call itself is clear and both speaker modes are serviceable. Is it easy to snap photos with a phone as big as this? No. Honestly, it's a real challenge to keep it steady even with software stabilization. But that 13 megapixel camera can capture some really nice shots given the chance. Will you have an easy time finding a 4K TV to do justice to the phone's ultra high def video? No. But the fact that you can even shoot in 4K is pretty awesome. Is it fun to use stock software elements like the Samsung keyboard or the browser? No. But the beauty of Android is you can download almost any replacement you want. And the beauty of the Note 3's hardware is that 19 times out of 20, it'll run it just fine. So after almost four months, the story of the Note 3 continues to be one of excess. When it's not saying no but, this is a phone that's really built to say yes. It's a device for those who value kitchen sink inclusiveness over refined minimalism. For Tim the Toolman Taylor types who want more power, whatever the cost. And in that respect, it delivers. If you're one of those people with enough money to invest in the Note 3 and its ecosystem, you'll find a phablet more capable than any other. That's something we've said a lot before, and it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. Don't forget, folks, this was the After the Buzz re-review. Our initial review of the Galaxy Note 3 is still available for your reading pleasure at pocketnow.com, and the video is available here on our channel page. And to be sure you don't miss future reviews, features, editorials, and so on, follow us on social media. In the meantime, drop us a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave us a comment down below if you have some feedback. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you very soon.